In the last video, we integrated Auth0 Auth notification to our finance dashboard application. This time, we will connect Prisma to Planet Scale database and create tables. And also, I will show you how you can seed your database with test data. To start, first, let's head over to planetscale.com and create your PlanetScale account. Press sign in and then sign up for an account. Fill in your email and password. Accept that you supposedly read the terms and services. After creating your account, you will be redirected to the initial dashboard. Press on create a new database, give it a database name. Uh, in my case, it will be finance dashboard. And then you need to choose a region for your database. It's best to select the one which is the nearest to you or to your users. After that, you will be redirected to your database dashboard. As you can see, the database is currently initializing. And now we need to set up the connection strings. Currently, we only have the main branch and we want to have our admin role password. So let's press create password. And now you will be presented with the dialog window where be sure to copy your generated password because it's the only time you will see it. Be assured that I will regenerate mine after this video. So now you need to select the technology you will be connecting to the database with. In our case, it will be Prisma. So as you can see, they automatically generate your .environment database connection URL with included password and also they generate a default schema for your Prisma. So let's go ahead and copy the database URL. Now open the environment file and replace previously defined database URL with the new one. So this database URL will allow our application to authenticate with the database and connect to it. The second step is to update schema.prisma. So let's go ahead and copy the generated Prisma file and replace the default which was generated by T3 stack. We also will no longer need the dbsqlite file because we will be switching to the planet scale. All right, so we have database URL defined in our environment file and we have a new uh, schema.prisma file. This plugin for Visual Studio Code is very helpful. It's called Prisma, just like that. It provides you with a syntax highlighting, formatting, auto-completion, jump to definitions, lintings, and stuff like that. So go ahead and install it if you want, but I highly recommend it. Okay, so I already have this plugin installed, so let's go ahead and open our schema.prisma file. On the right hand side, you can see the database schema we'll be implementing for this finance dashboard application. We will have a table for users, bank accounts, categories, and transactions. Each user will have his bank accounts, his created categories, and associated transactions. Each transaction will be associated to a specific bank account and optionally to a category. Now to create these tables in planet scale with Prisma, we will be defining the models. So let's define a model for user, a model for bank account, a model for category, and a model for transaction. As you will see later on, the Prisma will generate a separate table for each model defined in schema Prisma file. So we defined four models, now we can add all the details within the tables. Let's start from the user model or user table and let's define an ID for the user. We can say ID and provide a type. Then we also use an annotation at ID which will tell Prisma that this ID is the primary key for this table. To define a relation between the user and bank account, we can say bank accounts space, instead of a type, provide a model name. And it will be array, because the user can have multiple accounts. And this Prisma plugin, which I showed you previously, is really cool, because as you can see, it automatically generated the relation definition for bank account model. It included the user with the relation annotation and fields user ID, which references the ID in the user table. Fields bank accounts and user will not actually exist in the database. They are used by Prisma to generate a Prisma client. 
but the user ID field will exist in the bank account table. It defines the relation between the two. The one thing this plugin did wrong is the question mark in the end after the user and the string, because that would eventually mean that the bank account does not need to have a user, but in our case, the user needs to be required. Therefore, we remove the question marks. And this will ensure that each bank account needs to be associated with the user. Also, the users can create their categories for, for example, expenses and incomes. So we do the same. Category and category model name as a type and brackets to indicate that the user can have multiple categories. The plugin again generated the relation for model category and we also need to remove those question marks again. Lastly, the users can also have transactions. Let's do the same again. Transaction, transaction, all right. That's basically it for our user model and user table. Go ahead and, and add the missing fields for our bank account table. So let's define an ID for bank account. ID will be an integer. And let's add an annotation at ID. And let's provide the default value for it to be auto incremented by the database. If you're wondering why we set the ID for the user to be a string, but in this case we have an integer, that's because the user ID will come from the auth0. And in auth0, the user ID is string. But for bank accounts, categories, and transactions, we want the IDs to be just uh, numeric values from one to whatever. Okay, next our bank account needs to have an account number, which is a required field. The bank account needs to have a balance with the value of big int. Let's also define some relations between the bank account and transactions. Let's do transaction, transaction array. Again, the relation was automatically generated by the plugin. Actually, let's make those relations lowercase. And remove the question mark because we want that each and every transaction would be associated with a specific bank account. Prisma also supports unique attributes. It can be used on a single field or on a multiple fields, also called as a composite or compound unique constraints. Let's say that for bank account table, the unique values needs to be account number and user ID, which means that the one particular user will not be able to have two different bank accounts with the same account number. So that's it for bank accounts table. Let's add the remaining fields to the categories table. Add an ID, which is an integer with annotation ID, default auto increment. The category will also have a name with the value of string. Category can have type, which is a string. In our application, it will be, for example, income or expenses. Category will have an icon and category will have an icon color which will be used later on in the application. And let's define some relations between the category and transactions. So transaction, transaction array, plugin generated again the relation. Let's remove the question marks and make it lowercase. And let's define again a unique attributes, which will be name and type and user ID, which basically means that a single user can have only one category with a specific name and type. For example, type expenses, category name, food, or whatever, gas. So that's it for categories. Let's move on to the last one, transactions. Let's define an ID, again, integer, ID default auto increment. Let's give it a date because we want to know when the transaction happened. Amount of type begin, note of type string, and let's add that question mark, which indicates that a note is an optional field in this table. Let's also define a recipient, again of type string, and this field is optional. Let's make the category optional, because as you will see later on, a transaction can be without a category. 
meaning the user needs to explicitly set a category for a transaction if he wants to. I think that's it for transaction table. I don't think we need any unique constraints, at least for now. So yeah, I think our schema is finished. Let's take another look. We have a transaction table with ID, with date when the transaction happened, with the amount, with the note and recipient. The transaction is related to a user and to a bank account, and optionally it can be assigned to a category. Category has an ID, name, type, icon, icon color. It will be associated with the user and with transactions. And the unique constraint here is name, type, and user ID. Bank account table, ID, account number, balance, begin, user, transactions, and unique account number and user ID. And the user model or table itself, the user has an ID. It will be associated with bank accounts, categories, and transactions. Okay, so we have our schema defined. Now we need to make Prisma create those tables in our Planet Scale database. To do that, let's run npx prisma db push command. So prisma schema loaded, data source is mysql at planet scale, and our database is now in sync with our prisma schema. And they also generated a prisma client. So let's check it whether or not those tables were actually created. And as you can see, yes, we have four tables in our Planet Scale database. Now we can open up the web console and say show tables, which will list all the tables which are defined in our database. Then we can say describe and the table name. So let's say user. It returns the model or the columns of the table. So we can see that the user has an ID, which is string. Um, it cannot be null and it's a primary key. Let's try to select from user table and of course this table is currently empty. So if you remember in the last video we implemented auth0 authentication. We added the login to the application, login and sign up to the application, but we haven't saved the user ID in the database. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's create repositories folder under the server. Repositories will be the files or repositories in which we will directly communicate with our database. So for users, create user.repository. So in here, let's export the create if not exist function. It will be an async function. It will accept user as a parameter of type user profile, which comes from auth0 client. Then we say const user id equals user dot sub. In sub, there is a unique user identifier, which we'll see in a second. So now we need to check whether or not such user with this id already exists in our database. So we can say const user in db equals await prisma dot user dot find first and provide arguments that we want to find a user where the ID is. And let's say that user.sub is always defined because it will be in our case, because we don't allow guest users in our application. Okay, so now if the user in DB does not exist, then we can save that user in the database. Await prisma.user.create. Then we say data and we need to provide all the columns of that user. So our user will only have an ID. So yep, that's it for this function. We first get the user ID from auth0 client. We check if we already have saved such an user in our database, and if not, we create it. Now let's go back to our auth0 route and uncomment that function call and import that function from user repository. So now we can start our application and test it. 
we get redirected to the login page. We select an account. So as you can see, we have some Prisma query logging happening in the terminal. So we can assume that it worked. And now we can check the planet scale database. Let's once again do the select everything from user table. And yeah, as you can see, my user ID was saved in the user table. So far, we created planet scale account. We created a database in it. We connected to it with our Prisma in finance dashboard application. We defined our Prisma schema file, which defines the model of the databases. We created the database tables. We saved the user into the database. And now I will show you how you can seed your database using Prisma client and Prisma's integrated seeding functionality. Seeding basically allows you to consistently recreate the same data in your database. For example, in our case, I want to populate some test data, some transactions, some categories for a specific user we just saved in our database so that it would be easier to develop uh, tables for CRUD operations for creating transactions, creating categories, updating them or deleting them. If you are still here, please consider subscribing. It would really help me out. Thank you. So seeding in Prisma is done via seed.ts file. Let's go ahead and create a seed file under Prisma directory. So in this file, we will call seed data function. Let's define the function itself above const seed data equals a sync function which will accept user id as a parameter let's also define a constant for seed user id and give it a user id we previously saved in the database this user will be our test user let's say inside of it let's do a try catch within try block let's add some console logs so console log starting seeding Let's also import Prisma itself from server DB file. Since this script will be used to constantly recreate the testing data, the first thing we want to do is to delete all of the data related to this particular test user. So let's say await prisma.bank account, delete many, and delete the bank accounts where the user ID is the one passed from the parameters. After that, let's add a console log saying that deleted user ID records in bank accounts table. So let's delete all the transactions related to that particular user, add a console log stating that those transactions were deleted. And the same for categories table, delete all the categories related to that user. All right, so first we deleted all the data related to that specific user. Now we need to create it. We will create just a single bank account for a user. Let's say const bank account equals await prisma dot bank account dot create. Give it the data and provide all the required fields. We don't need to provide an ID because it will be automatically generated and incremented by the database itself. So let's give it an account number. So here's the interesting part. We could give some random account number or any data which we'll be creating later on. The better option would be to install the Faker library, which is used to generate random test data. It has a lot of stuff in it, you will see in a second. So let's install Faker GS library under the dev dependencies. Let's import the faker library at the top of the file. Import faker from faker.js. Now it's instead of giving a random string, we can say faker dot. And as you can see, there is multiple options like divided into different modules, as they call it. There is um, random data types, commerce, airline, animals, colors, and, and similar stuff. So since we want a random account number, we can say faker.finance.bac, which is bank identifier code. And also we can give it an option to include branch code in it. 
you will see the result in a few seconds. Then we say balance, which needs to be a random begin. We can give an options object and say generate random begin from 10 to 15,000. Also, we need to provide an user ID. So this block will create a bank account for this specific user. We can say console log added bank account. Next, we will create a couple of categories for this user. Let's say await prisma.category.create. Inside of it, give it the data and provide all of the required fields. So type income, name, for example, salary, icon, icon name. This icon name is from the icons library, which we'll be using later on in the application. Icon color, icon color, some random hex color, and of course, user ID. One neat feature Prisma also supports when creating or getting um, the data from the database is nesting. So since we defined a relation between the categories and the transactions, we can create transactions while creating the category. To do that, we say transaction, create many, give it a data, and the data will be array of three. So we first initiate a array of length three, fill it with empty objects, and then map it to return a proper transaction objects. We of course get the auto completion by Prisma client, and again, we need to provide all of the required fields for a transaction. So we say that this transaction will be related to this bank account ID. So bank account, bank account dot ID. Then we need to define an amount of the transaction. So let's again use the faker library to get a random amount. Faker dot finance dot amount. Here we could use the same method we used before from a faker where we generated a random begin, but it also has a finance.amount method, which can generate um, an amount with the currency symbols and auto formatting. So we want an amount from, let's say, 1000 as a minimum to a maximum of 5000. Since this method returns a string, we need to convert it to begin. Also, let's define a random date for a transaction. So faker.date.recent and provide an options object with days 20, which means that we want it to generate a random date in between 20 days. So yeah, this will create a category of type income with the name salary, an icon, icon color, user ID, and also three transactions with the bank account ID we created before, a random amount and a random date. Now let's add another console log stating that we added income category with transactions. Let's do the same and create one more category for this user. This time it will be expense category with the name of, for example, food. Let's change the icon to utensils, give it a different icon color, and let's generate five transactions instead of three. Let's generate a random amount from 10 to 200. Also, let's provide a recipient, again, the random from faker, faker.company name. It will return a random company name. And let's also add a note which will be faker.finance.transaction description. That's it for the expenses category. Let's modify the console log that we added expenses category. So yeah, we generated all the data we need. Now let's handle the catch block. Do a console error of error, if any. Do a process exit one. And finally, let's disconnect the Prisma client. We want to do that in the successful case or in an error case. That's about it for the seeding script itself. Now to execute the script, we need to modify our package JSON. We need to define a Prisma object in it with the key seed inside of it and provide a command, TSX and a path name to, the, to our script. 
So in our case, it's TSX Prisma slash C.TS. TSX is a CLI command alternative to Node for seamlessly running TypeScript and ESM in both CommonJS and module package types. So this is what we will use to execute our script. For that to work, we need to install TS6 in our dev dependencies. All right, now we should be able to seed our database. To do that, execute the command prisma db seed. And let's see what happens. Okay, we got an error, which states that invalid environment variables and node environment required. Okay, to fix that, go to your schema.mgs file if you used t3 stack to initiate the project of course and we need to provide a default node environment which is development in our case and now we should be good to go retry starting seeding error cannot convert number to a big int so it seems it cannot convert a decimal to big integer, which totally makes sense. And I only just remember that we should suppose to save all of the amounts, balances and stuff like that in the database as cents, which means we need to multiply every amount or balance by 100. This is one of the ways to store money related data into the databases in cents because it helps when you are, especially it helps when you have multiple currency support, which we will eventually add. So in JavaScript, multiplying, dividing numbers can be interesting at times. Uh, I'm talking about the precision, not going to dig deeper into that right now. So in case you need to do a lot of arbitrary precision decimal arithmetics in, in your application, my suggestion would be to install library like BigGS, which is small and fast JavaScript library for exactly that. So let's go ahead and install that library. Now we can create an utils directory and in there we create number utils and inside of it we export const to sense function, which will accept amount as a number. Then let's import big from big GS. And I think I forgot to install types dev dependency as well. So let's do that. npm install types slash big GS save dev. Let's get back to where we left off. So to sense will accept amount of type number. Now we need to convert a given amount to cents. So to do that, let's create a new instance of big, give it an amount, then say dot times and multiply by 100 and return to number value. Let's get back to our seed script. And you know what? Let's actually modify our schema.prisma. Instead of begins, let's just use integers. It will be a bit easier and I don't think we will ever hit a limits of integer in JavaScript. And if ever we will hit those limits, I will be more than happy to refactor this code to big integers. So let's change balance from big int to integer, transaction amount from big int to integer as well. Now we need to regenerate our database because we changed the schema, we changed the, the types of the columns. So to do that, we can say npx prisma db push with the forcer set flag, which will basically erase all database tables and recreate from scratch. But since it's just the beginning of the project, the databases are still empty, we can do that easily. All right, so database is in sync. Let's check that the database is empty. Select all from user. Our user is gone. Let's log into the application again so that this user would be saved. Okay, we logged in. Let's double check that it was saved. It is. Let's also make sure that the user ID hasn't changed. But I believe the auth0 is returning the same user ID every time. So yeah, the user ID hasn't changed. So we are good. 
now we need to modify our seed script itself so bank account balance instead of begin let's say faker number integer from 10 to 1500 let's remove begin from transactions amount let's get back to bank account and we need to convert this value to cents so we will call our function which we created just a minute ago so to cents and pass it the random integer it will multiply it by a hundred let's do the same for the transaction amount to cents random amount let's do the same here to cents random amount it's still complaining oh it, it returns the string so we also need to convert a number before passing it to cents all right that seems okay let's try the database seeding again prisma the best seed okay it's running fingers crossed starting seeding a lot of logs the seed command has been executed wonderful let's check the console show tables select everything from bank account table as you can see the bank account was created with a random account number and the random balance value which is a balance multiplied by a hundred because it's cents let's also select everything from category we have two categories created income and expense and finally let's select everything from transaction table and as you can see we have eight transactions generated the expense transactions has random nodes generated by a faker it has random recipients and of course random amounts all right that's it in the next video we are going to be creating api routes for crud operations for bank accounts for categories for transactions we will be doing some react tables to retrieve the data delete the data modify it add new ones and so on see you there